Well, good morning. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. A uh, number of items to share with you. Actually, I don't have a document that I'm waiting for someplace. Um, so there were a couple of items that we thought might be of interest to you. One, obviously, is the ambulance fee, uh, which the county executive has sent over. Um, I think everyone here understands that that was somewhat of a contentious issue. Uh, a couple of years ago, that was approved uh, by the county council on a five to four vote. Uh, and because of that approval, went to referendum as a result of uh, the petition that was, had enough signatures and the voters said no. Um, the county executive obviously believes that the economic circumstances today warrant revisiting that issue. Um, and so the matter will probably be before my colleagues once again to determine whether or not we share that point of view or whether people believe that uh, the voters have already spoken on this issue and therefore it's no longer really on the merits per se. It is whether or not one respects the voters' decision in this regard. Um, I can't speak for my colleagues at this juncture. People are just absorbing this information. They're trying to figure out what their individual responses are, so I really can't predict how this will play out. Uh, I did, uh, was at a ceremony with the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad yesterday, uh, which they dedicated a new truck that is quite extraordinary, actually. If you haven't seen it, you ought to take a look at it, um, in which the volunteer uh, leadership indicated to me in no uncertain terms that if this matter was approved by the council again on a 5-4 or otherwise vote, they would uh, again take it to referendum and uh, ask the voters to speak to it. Um, as to whether or not we want to do uh, Groundhog Day in this regard, uh, again, will be up to my colleagues. It is a matter on which, on the merits, it was obviously closely contested. Uh, and as to whether or not people believe the merits, if you will, should decide the issue now, uh, remains unclear. Um, I don't think we've met since Annapolis had reached its uh, tentative conclusion. Uh, so let me just share. We are, I think our county is disappointed uh, with how the session concluded. Um, our county had fought very hard for a number of items. Uh, we had a strong point of view with respect to maintenance of effort. We had a strong point of view with respect to the pension cost shift. We had a strong desire for transportation funding. Uh, and we hope to have a tax bill which would not harm the county's competitiveness. I think it's fair to say that on all of those fronts, we did not achieve what we hoped to achieve in Annapolis. Obviously, Annapolis didn't hope to achieve what Annapolis wanted to achieve either. And so we, we do have the, the prospects for a special session. It isn't clear to me, nor is it clear to the leadership, uh, as to what the agenda will be. Uh, I had been asked as to whether or not I thought that the prospects with respect to the pension cost shift would fundamentally change in the special session. And I opined that I did not think so, based on what I had heard, that there was a conference committee report that had been signed. And therefore, I expect that that would be, continue to be the position. I'd be delighted to be proven wrong with respect to that, because the, the pension cost shift is a very significant issue for our county going forward. Um, the doomsday budget is, is not particularly great outcome either. Uh, it is a, a one-year hit that would have a disproportionate impact on the school system as opposed to the budget which would, if approved, would have a disproportionate impact on county government per se for years to come. So there aren't good options here. And we will figure out what we need to do going forward. We're at the beginning of our budget process 
and uh, my hope is that Annapolis will uh, reconvene in a time for us during the course of this budget to know what we need to do. Uh, that's not assured at this juncture. Um, and so we will play this day by day, uh, working with the county executive to figure out how we fill whatever gaps there are uh, once we know what gaps there are to fill. Um, I will be introducing t tomorrow a bill on uh, PEPCO tree trimming uh, that is a matter of some debate. Um, it is an issue that has arisen in part because uh, PEPCO, by virtue of not having attended to its tree trimming for many years, has been quite aggressive in taking up the slack. Uh, and I think all of us who drive around the county see the trucks almost every day. And I've been advised by my office staff that the, it is one of the top three generators of phone calls to our office. Uh, we hear from our residents all the time that they believe that PEPCO is being overly aggressive when it comes to tree trimming. Uh, the phrase that we have used is that PEPCO has become Paul Bunyan. Uh, I don't expect them to become Johnny Appleseed, but my hope is that somewhere between Paul Bunyan and Johnny Appleseed, we can find a middle ground that works. Um, so the legislation that I will be introducing tomorrow with Councilmember Elrich uh, is an, an attempt to make sure that we have tree trimming that represents the state of the art. And equally important, that private landowners know their rights when it comes to tree trimming on their property. Um, we have heard, I had heard from council members as well as citizens that PEPCO comes onto their property and says we need to do X, Y, Z, and if we don't, uh, you'll be responsible when the lights go out. And private pr landowners are uh, intimidated by what they had heard. And, and actually, in the very early stages of last year, they would leave brochures or door hangers saying that if we don't hear back from you in the next 48 to 72 hours, we will consider your silence to be consent to our doing what we want to do on your land. And so a significant aspect of this bill is a citizen's right to know provision where PEPCO makes it very explicit in writing as to what it is that they are entitled to do and what they need the consent of a landowner to do. Um, at the same time, you may remember that PEPCO came to us at the height of their situation and said that there were property owners that even when a tree posed an imminent hazard to lines, they, uh, the property owner would refuse and they asked for special authority in that situation. And I felt that on balance that that was a legitimate issue to be raised as long as we were also ensuring that they were doing it in an environmentally sensitive manner and coupling it with the citizen's right to know provision that in those limited instances in which PEPCO sees a tree that is about to fall on their lines on private property that they could ask the county to go and provide an independent review of that situation. And if the county concluded that, yes, it does pose an imminent hazard, that in that instance, the county would authorize the taking down of the tree as a public nuisance. Um, so it is very limited in scope, but felt like on balance, it provided a balanced approach to this whole set of issues in which we do want more reliable service, but we also want to respect private property owners and we want PEPCO to do their work in an environmentally sensitive way. Finally, uh, I've just shared with you um, a letter that I'm sending over to the consent to the county executive the, this morning in which I am urging the county executive to consider creating the position of chief innovation officer. This is an outgrowth of our shaping the future, adapting to change 
uh, series in which we had representatives of the new economy come before our county, people like Google and the funder of Twitter. And we said to them, at a time when we're trying to expand our tax base, expand uh, our economic opportunities, how do we attract the Googles of the world to locate in Montgomery County? And one of the things they said to us is that you have two things. They said you should brand yourself as a county as someone that wants to and is on the cutting edge. And two, you have a treasure trove of data you have data that people would love to use for apps on your mobile phones and other ways in which people can take economic advantage of and create economic opportunities out of information that the county has. And in addition, going forward, we will be um, renegotiating with Com uh, Comcast and Verizon and other providers of broadband services. And so a chief innovation officer can do a number of things. One, can help our county brand itself as being on the cutting edge. Two, can work with our citizens to see what we can do in terms of maximizing the economic assets of our data. And three, assist our county when we renegotiate with Comcast and Verizon and other providers of broadband to make sure that we have the policies in place that maximize those opportunities. The city of San Francisco has a chief innovation officer. And so this is a concept that is gaining favor in corporations and in local governments. And in my judgment, would send this a positive signal that Montgomery County welcomes innovation and um, welcomes the new economy. Those are my four items that I thought I would address up front and then turn it to you guys to ask questions that are on your mind. Chris, just what is your personal view on the aging of Speedway? My personal, as you know, my personal view before was that I opposed the ambulance fee. Um, and my personal view is that this is no longer on the merits of the ambulance fee, that in a context in which the voters have spoken, um, I personally believe that we ought to honor the will of our voters. Um, so I, I will, I understand that people have strong views on the ambulance fee generally and that, that it is a matter that can be debated on the merits. I, I don't see how this, myself, Roger Berliner speaking, how we get to the merits given the voters have spoken with respect to it. Why are we the county executive has sent it over. Uh, it's certainly my prerogative as to whether, as council president, to put it on the agenda. Uh, I haven't made a final decision with respect to that, but I want to be respectful of the county executive. Uh, so my inclination in this moment is that I will put it on our agenda and allow our, my colleagues to to vote up or down, but it is before us because the county executive is making it part of a supplemental budget request. Uh, he will clearly, he didn't just send this over without it having some impact on uh, what he's going to be proposing in terms of the dollars that we will need either for Annapolis or otherwise. Uh, so that's why we're considering it. It's not because we raised our hands and said, gee, can we, can we revisit this? Okay. Uh, talking about, uh, you said what you got from Annapolis, you wanted a tax bill that made you competitive with Virginia. It's going to be the income tax if they end up passing something. Do you see that making uh, Montgomery County more or less competitive with Virginia? I think it's clear that what is under consideration now will make us less competitive with Northern Virginia, and I, I regret that. I, I personally thought that the Senate approach to taxation was a better approach for our county and still was a progressive approach. The, the legislation that I believe uh, is under consideration now is more targeted on high income earners and that obviously has a disproportionate impact on Montgomery County. So in a context in which we're trying to create a positive incentive for businesses to relocate here, this will, will not be a plus for us. Um, what can you say about the end of 
the session, how it ended with none of these things happening and all this infighting uh, in the Democratic Party, but to, particularly between the three top leaders, what's your sort of take on what happened, how it ended? Uh, I think that many of us share the view of uh, Senator Askin, who came before us the other night and said that he was embarrassed. Uh, I would be embarrassed if I were uh, involved in that kind of situation. Uh, I do think it is fixable. Uh, I think there is an ongoing debate with respect to gambling and the extent of gambling in uh, Annapolis and that that debate has overshadowed the other work and uh, so they need to resolve that set of issues but uh, I personally am confident that they will knock heads and will get this done. How important is it to the county, given your budget situation and all the budgeting you have to do in the next two weeks, uh, how quickly, how important is it to you guys that they come back quickly? Well, we are among the first counties in the state to move forward with our budget, and so it puts us in, in a bit of a quandary. Um, I, so, yeah, it, would it be desirable for them to get back sooner rather than later? Absolutely. If not, we'll handle it the best we can. Uh, regarding the Pepco bill, can you talk about? You said the citizens' right to know. What you mean by that? What the, what people will see the difference if it's get passed? Yes, what people will see is literally they will be informed when Pepco knocks on their door and says we would like to do X, Y, or Z to a tree on your property. They will be told what their rights are with respect to that, which includes the right to say no. Um, and so, but for those situations in which there is an imminent hazard to Pepco's lines, we wanted to make sure that residents understood what their rights are and therefore could insist upon a more measured approach that, again, they wouldn't come home at the end of the day and look for their beautiful tree and find, you know, a stump and say, uh, this wasn't exactly what I had in mind. What would be the circumstances that Pepco could still take the tree down? Only, Pepco could only take the tree down as they could only take the tree down. Actually, they don't have any rights, if you will, with respect to private property now. Uh, so their rights are constrained, but people don't understand that. Um, today, if a tree poses an imminent hazard to a Pepco line and an owner says no, that's the end of the story. What this legislation would do Again, if there's an independent verification by the county, then in fact, it does pose an imminent hazard. In that instance, it would allow Pepco to take down the tree, despite the owner's objection. Why has this been such a difficult issue? I mean, Pepco was told to cut down the trees, they're doing that, and now people are complaining that they're cutting down the trees. They, it why isn't, has it been so difficult? What makes it difficult is the manner in which they're cutting down the trees. It isn't whether our citizens want more reliable electric service. I think you understand. We do. And we recognize that tree trimming is a part of that. Part of what made this a difficult conversation was Pepco held, hid, if you will, behind tree trimming for an excuse with respect to the reliability when on sunny day outages, when they were in the lowest quartile in the nation, trees have very little to do with sunny day outages. So there was some pushback here of Pepco having raised the tree trimming set of issues to begin with as though this was the end of the story on their reliability when it was just a part of it. But it is all about how they do their work. It is whether or not they do their work in an environmentally sensitive way in which they are doing what they need to do, but not more than what they need to do. And our, again, our office, I don't think I'm alone in this regard, we get phone calls literally almost every day from a citizen who says, what are they doing? Have you seen what our street now looks like? So that's why this legislation is important. I will say to you that PEPCO is now pushing back before the Maryland Public Service Commission and asking that our county be preempted by the Maryland Public Service Commission with respect to our setting forth standards and making sure that they do it in an environmentally appropriate way and I'll be communicating with the Maryland Public Service Commission to make sure that they don't get in our way of making sure that our citizens are protected. So trying to preempt the, the bill that would come in tomorrow? Right? Uh, they, they may be trying to do that, <laughs> yes. Uh, are they just overreacting in their tree trimming to 
from what they've been, you know, when two years ago when the outages were so bad, was this just an overreaction by them, do you think? Well, I think what has happened, again, is that they allowed their system to degrade. They did not spend all the money that was allocated to them for tree trimming for years. And then they got their hands slapped, and then they said, okay, by God, we're going to do this. And they have. But they've done it, in a, again, in a manner that I believe has caused great consternation. It isn't whether we want them to do their work. We want them to do it, if you will, again, in that environmentally sensitive way. So we're trying to find the sweet spot, and our citizens have strongly suggested we're not there yet. As of today, if somebody from Pepco would knock on somebody's door and say, hey, we need to do this, and, you know, they might give their spiel or how, if you don't want us to do this, you know, whatever can happen, I say. You're saying that their right as of today is they don't have to in any way that we do. And then if we end up passing this bill that you're talking about then, then they would have the right as long as they came to you at Montgomery County Council and they said, yeah, we need to do this. Um, almost. In some ways, you're right. We are actually expanding their rights in a very limited circumstance. And that circumstance is, is where the tree poses an eminent hazard, eminent hazard to Pepco's lines, and the county independently verifies that that's the case. In that limited instance, we are expanding their rights in order to ensure the reliability of the system and that we would declare, in effect, the tree a public nuisance, which would then authorize PEPCO to take what action is necessary in that regard. In every other instance, we are informing the citizens that they have the right to say no or to work with PEPCO to bring about the result that is most appropriate. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, right now, citizens have more rights than they would if this were to pass. That's a fair statement. They just don't know their rights now and therefore haven't acted on their rights. So my belief is that by informing citizens of their rights, they will be better guardians of their rights. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Roger. Um, yes, yeah. um, okay. Um, has, it, has there been a substantial number of no, there haven't been. There haven't been. And that's because they're not informed of their rights. Uh, I can't tell you why yes, that's yes. the case. But they're, they're, Pepco, as you may recall, again, last year highlighted this as a major issue for them. And I forget what the number was, but it was, was it a lot? No, but it was, it was enough that it got your attention. They, they brought it up. They brought it. They, this right. was their initiative. Now, as far as alloc allocated funds for trimming, those are allocated funds within Pepco's own budget, or are those funds that the county allocated for Pepco's? No, that's, that's those Pep Pepco's. Those were Pepco's dollars that were allocated to them by the Maryland Public Service Commission, and they didn't use those dollars for that purpose, and for tree my, trimming. My last question is, um, uh, the three issues that your office gets the most calls about, one is tree trimming, what are the other two? I'm going to do a parry moment on you. I didn't even ask that question, quite frankly. Oh, I just okay. my staff told me that this was one of the top oh, three, the top and three. <laughs> that's all I needed to okay. know for purposes of this. Right. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Now, where did you fall on the stump removal issue? I know that was I'm, I'm keeping the stump removal in, and they 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 take issue with that, and we'll fight that out. Okay. Uh, on the uh, in terms of uh, paying for the pension shift. Uh, do you have any idea as to how you're going to be putting that into the budget? Any idea if you're going to be raising property taxes beyond what the county executive has proposed, for example? I think what I suggested, Rachel, is that we're in the very beginning stages of our budget deliberations, and so it would be inappropriate to suggest to you how we are going to deal with it. We're going to be working with the county executive. I'm going to be working with my colleagues, and we'll figure out what we think is the best way of, of dealing with it. We'll be scouring the budget to see what resources there are in the budget to address these shortfalls. There actually there was one other 
item that I, I should raise with you because it's had a fair amount of conversation, and that's the disposition bill, the county asset disposition bill. I just wanted to share with you that I am pulling that item off the agenda for tomorrow uh, to give ourselves a little more time to work through some of the issues that have been raised with respect to it. Uh, I would anticipate that we will be able to move the bill either next week or the week thereafter. I think there's some staff uh, vacation time that is uh, going to get in our way of taking it up in a week. But uh, there have been a number of issues that have been raised, and it just felt like well, let, let's make sure that we are real tight with respect to this. I said it has been something that has been a, a somewhat of a flashpoint with the executive and with other folks. Just to clarify, um, the same, are you talking the same issues that were discussed in the GO committee or are you talking additional issues? There, but there were some issues that were discussed in the GO committee that didn't have an opportunity to get resolved then, but the, what we wanted to do, actually what happened was, as I think you appreciate, is that we put out an amended form of the bill, or the committee did, and then there was the Easter spring break and then we came back and so there were a lot of people that simply did not have time during spring break to, to focus on it and we just want to make sure that before we move on a bill of this consequence that we feel very comfortable with what we're doing how we're going about it. Can you point to specific issues that would raise this issue? Well there was one issue that I believe was raised at committee with respect to uh, the disposition of state land and which was going to a the county, but only as a way of facilitating it, getting to a developer that was doing a swap in which there would have been a uh, something before the Board of Public Works. So there would have been a public hearing before the Board of Public Works. There would have been assurance that there was being sold at fair market value, and the county was acting as a facilitator in a swap arrangement in which it, the county would only have the property for six hours before it was to go to uh, a developer in return for X dollars, et cetera, et cetera. So the question arises in that context in which this, the county is actually operating as a middleman with respect to the disposition of state assets in which you've had a public hearing and an assurance of fair market value what role does the county need to take and would the county end up getting in the way of a transaction? So all along our goal has been to make sure that we don't get in the way of transactions that have otherwise been fully vetted and assurance of, of fair market value. So this seemed to be one of those categories where you said, okay, this is a situation. You may not be able to identify all of them in advance, but this one was brought to our attention and we want to make sure that that and other ones have an opportunity to be looked at. And uh, when, actually one basic question, what are, do you have any options to sort of push the budget vote past June 1st or that there's no, is there no alternative? Do you have to have a vote through a, a budget per well, actually, once upon a time, we, we did contemplate that, that question. Mr. Farber, would you care to uh, address that? I forget the, the legal issue with respect to that. Uh, date of budget approval? Yes. Yeah, and the charter is June 1st. So there's no real option to no. not push it? Okay. No. Going back to that land deal process, um, when will that be brought up next? When will we hear everybody else's opinion on the council? I don't know. Be introducing it tomorrow. Is it on the calendar for tomorrow or introduction? I don't believe so. No, it's not. No, it hasn't. It's not being introduced tomorrow. It's not on the. No, it's not. It's not on for tomorrow. I think it, it came over too late for it to be on for tomorrow. So the earliest that would be brought up would be next week if it is to be introduced. I'm in conversation with my colleagues with respect to that. I've shared with you my own inclination, but. I'll be talking with my colleagues with respect to how they would care to proceed on this. So would it be separate from the other budget amendments you would be introducing, or I guess well, all in one? It would probably be separate insofar as most of your budget amendments don't require this type of enabling legislation, so this would be legislation which would, which would allow for a budget amendment, if you will. So. What are the chances of, of your colleagues saying, yeah, let's, let's introduce this? I mean, have you really talked to them at all? Really, we, we just got this late last week, and uh, so 
my chief of staff has sent around a memorandum to uh, other chiefs of staffs and asked for my colleagues' views as to how they'd care uh, for me to proceed with respect to this, and we'll just sort it out okay. in the next week. Roger, because physicians, though, is that going back to committees for this final, or just, just like staff needs to work on some language? Yeah, it's not going back okay. to committee. It'll, it'll, we'll have a, a number of meetings to try and figure out what amendments, if necessary, to prepare for when it comes to full council. And my hope would be that we'd be able to work out the bugs with respect to it to the extent that they exist and then have a package of amendments that we would be ready to take to full council and take care of it there. Yeah, just your staff, you said, uh, if, if it were to be introduced and it were to have to go back to voters and ask them, hey, what do you think about this thing? I mean, we'd have to do that all over again. And I've shared my own views with you with respect to whether this is something we ought to pursue, but again, there are other views out there. Mm -hmm. So that I've shared with you mine. Was that a binding referendum when they voted? Well, certainly binding as it pertains to the legislation at that time. I don't believe the county executive is precluded by law from resubmitting t two years later, if you will, a similar if not identical issue. I mean, it is, he did not amend the legislation. If it had been amended legislation, it might have changed for might have warranted, if you will, a different conversation, but putting the precise same proposition back before county residents two years later uh, on the basis of a fiscal situation, which at least to this member's perspective isn't materially different from what we faced two years ago at the height of the recession. Uh, you know, but he has a different point of view. That's certainly one possibility, but I think our county is going to, and our council is going to have to make the best assumptions it can with respect to Annapolis if they fail to come back before we have to act. Going back to the Pepco bill, um, just talking about sort of, you know, I guess the stick. Um, there's like a provision for violations of the Class A. Uh, could you just explain that a little bit? Well, basically, what we want to make sure is that when we set forth these standards, which again are standards that are industry standards, to make sure that people are um, trimming trees in an appropriate manner. That if a consumer concludes, or if a resident says gosh, that's not the case, and the county explores the situation and finds that it's not the case, then it'd be a violation of county law. But is that a civil fine, or is that is it even a fine, or is it just a, a letter in the record somewhere, or I just want to just... It's a civil fine. Do you know how much? Because it's not clear the... Oh, I forget what the class, uh, it's... Ms. Buffone, do you do... Okay, we'll get that information for you. Does that do it, guys? Thank you.